Hey. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Yeah, I saw that uh that other SIG meeting for open telemetry going on roughly the same time. So I need to figure that out. Yeah. I mean I, I watched the recording and the, the semantic working group. Um the first meeting, I mean the first one, there was no time for for the CI C D pipeline observability part. And the second time it was like 15 minutes at the end of the meeting. So there is Oh, a okay. lot of other conversation going on there. Um, so I guess, um, yeah. So if there is, um, if, if the group decides that they want to have like a regular meeting, they probably create a separate, um, a separate meeting because that the, the current one is the, the generic semantic working group and Got it, got it. Um, so, but yeah, it would be good to stay on top of the conversation there. Let's see. No, I think the last thing in the um, Slack channel was some, mainly some, some links to uh, some Fosden talks related to this. All right. Well, I guess it's pretty fast, so maybe I can get started. Let me share the notes. Yeah. Um, I'll put the link in the chat just in case. Oh, Where is the February 12th? There you go. Sign in. So for the recording, we just introduce. So welcome everyone to the uh, City Events Working Group. My name is Andrea Fritto. I work for IBM. I'm in UTC. And welcome everyone else. Um, let's see here. Some of you signed already in. So thanks for that. Um, right. Um, for agenda, let's start with the action items. Um, so the only one uh, was about the, the proposal I presented last week about custom, custom right. events, not custom update, custom event proposal. So we discussed setting some notes about transitioning from custom to core events, which I did in a section about all these interact with links, which I did. Um, I still need to do some, add something about the versioning bit and also create a PR for that. Out of curiosity, so uh, I haven't ever done a review on HackMD. Can you add comments like on a line or is it only the comments like in a global section? Do, do you know, Andrea? Um, I think you can add comments. Let yeah, see. I was trying to figure out how to add one to a specific line, but I couldn't. I could not manage to do that, so I figured I'd ask first. So if you s select something in the view, you can add a comment, and I think the comment will be linked 
Oh, you can't do it, it from is. the markdown. Okay, cool, cool. That that was the difference. Got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'll yeah. uh, I'll review you that uh, tonight. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, um, I did a short intro last week, but you were in there. If you want, there is also the recording from from last week. If you cool, cool. I'll take a look to, to watch. Yep. Um. Okay. Then. Um. So in the agenda, I had a kind of a, a recurring topics: a ticket proposal, the link proposal, uh, the city event translator. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there are more things or other things that you would like to discuss, please let me know. Otherwise, we can go follow this order if it makes sense. No, I, th I think this looks good. Okay. Um, so, ticket proposal. Um, Sean, is there anything or Ben that you would like to discuss on this uh, today? Yeah. Uh, hi. Um... No, I just made some updates. I don't really have anything to discuss, though, myself. Okay. So... Is the PR... Should, should we go and re-review the PR then based on your updates, I assume? Yeah, there's just one outstanding um, comment around adding a ticket URI. Um, I haven't had a chance to look into that yet, but uh, everything else I think is addressed. So yeah, it might be worth going through again and just seeing if there's anything outstanding. Thanks. Um, all right. So next would be the links proposal. Cool, yeah. So I made some updates before uh, the SIG meeting. Um, so I addressed all your comments, I believe, Andrea. And um, so the biggest thing, because I noticed that you had a lot of questions about like implementation, like technical details, especially around like propagation and whatnot. Um, so that's going to be an actual follow-up PR. So there's going to be, so there's this doc, which is, closely tied to just the specification and i've done my best to limit um implementation details and like algorithms and and uh, architecture in in this document because i wanted to keep the scope to to the spec but the the plan was after this would get merged um i would have a follow-up PR, which is talking about more of the architecture and how these things will be achieved via the SDKs, how things will be set up, and then even start um, implementing the link service. Like, you know, it doesn't need to be um, something that everyone uses, but, you know, the goal would be have some sort of service that, um, you know, as a starting base point that people could use. And then hopefully, um, that would just sit in front of a graph DB or any sort of DB really. Um, so that's kind of the plan. Um, but like I said, that's more a little bit of long-term thinking there. Um, but, uh, you know, the first goal is to get, uh, this PR merged and based off some of the comments, um, with the chain ID, you know, like fan out. I think that's handled by, I think it's just a little bit different than how you guys envisioned it would be handled. But um, like I said, if it, it still isn't clear, then um, I can I can expand on that a little bit. Um, and I went ahead and removed the su subject ID um, from, from the links because I know, um, I, I know it's going to be needed in the future. Um, especially with uh, with the tickets. Um, and, and the reason for this is mostly around when someone creates a GitHub PR. Here's a good concrete example. Someone creates a GitHub PR, right? There is no association with the, the ticket except for um, the ticket name or subject, essentially, right? We don't want to put like the full context ID in like a GitHub PR, Um so it's just the subject ID. That's that's kind of how me and Sean were thinking about it. Um, and there is no reason uh, for you to link to a uh, like ticket created event because what you're linking uh, typically for a ticket 
or for two ticket event is the ticket itself, not the event, right? So like a PR is linked to a ticket, not a ticket created or a ticket updated, right? So it, it doesn't really make sense in that regard. Um, and, and that's why I added it, but I'm okay adding it later because it is going to be needed, but I just wanted to explain the use case a little bit more with a con concrete example yeah. and give that explanation. And hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Um, yeah, I, I think, I mean, I think the way we've done those kind of association before was for the data model. So having like a ticket field in, sorry. Yeah. Having a ticket field in, in the, oh, sorry. No, having a change, a PR field in your ticket or the other way around. Uh, sorry. I'm getting confused, but so that, that's how we, we put references to subject until now. Um, uh, but yeah, if you wanted to have like the, the ability to, to a generic reference to any subject from any event, um, you would need to have a link because you couldn't possibly yes. do that generic. But, and I'm not sure if we need those kind of generic association, but yeah, so I think it would, if yeah, we do it. Yeah, yeah, for the tickets we would need because like the, um, like you would have no, like if you're looking at, let's say you have this front end that shows the links and you want to know like the ticket that was, you know, like unless that link is there, like you won't be able to see it. Right. So we need some way of referencing that via the links. Um, I don't know if that's what you're talking about, but, um, but yeah, you should be able to see everything that's associated with, with um, a flow, right? And that's everything from tickets to deployment. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I'm just, just, well, just thinking that um, in general, I mean, the, the way we've done this kind of association to a specific subject until now was for the, um, for the content of the, of the, of one event, for instance, if you want to, I don't know, let's say if you want to have a change merged or change created event to be associated with a ticket subject, uh, the way we we would do it is to to add a ticket. Um, yeah, maybe, but the ticket, the ticket you, it, yeah. is very disconnected, right? Like it's very disconnected from like the rest of the services. So like when you create a PR, for instance, right? That's kind of like the beginning of life cycle things like, and so the ticket, it, well, technically the ticket's actually the first thing that's, uh, is the start of the process, but the start of the CICD flow of things is actually the source code the chain events. Right. And so when, when you create a PR, um, you don't have any notion of a ticket, right? You just have the PR and the code, right? And the only way to get that data is like through some sort of metadata, whether that's through like commit or something of that nature. Um, and then we pull that information um, from the commit into uh, to be um, populated into these uh, source change events. Um, and the only way, and, and like I said, you know, like, if you were to go grab that subject's like information, um, you would get like all the events for, for a ticket. You would get like ticket created, ticket updated. But, you know, like I said, for a pull request, it doesn't care about the predicates. It only cares about the subject matter, right? So, um, so yeah, I, I still, I, I'm still, maybe I'm not understanding what you're asking, Andre, but like it just seems impossible with how the systems are. Okay. No. Uh, well, I, I just thought we could add a ticket uh, field into the the change events. Yeah. You know, so that. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But like, how how would it get? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. There would be a ticket filled, right? But like, it would be uh, the subject ID. Is that is that what you're thinking? Um. No, I mean, well, I, I don't want to, to take too much too much time on this. Right, but, right, right. Uh, um, let me. Maybe I can I can make and prepare an example um, offline. 
And okay. Yeah, that that can... would definitely be helpful. And we kind of we did go over like an actual field too. Um, but like I said, you know, links solves this exact problem, right? Um, of relating things one to one another. Um, so so yeah. Uh, and you know, it might, and you know, a ticket might be associated not just with like PRs, but like various other things. But yeah, like I said, um, we can, uh, we can talk about this more offline. Um, you know, we yeah definitely don't want to take up all the time. Um, but yeah, so the PR is, uh, ready to be re-reviewed. Um, I, I believe I got all the, uh, merge conflicts address, which was mostly around the artifact packaged and published. Um, you did say 0.4, but it, I got 0 0.3 because it updated to 0 0.2. And I was like, okay, this should be 0 0.3 then. So I don't know where uh, 0 0.4 came from, but uh, I hope that was a typo or maybe I'm missing something. But yeah, if you could retake a look at that and, and see if that makes sense, um, that, that would be really, really helpful. Um, and then what else? I think that was primarily it though. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think 0 0.4 is in the upcoming um, release. So the, the, the spec version would be 0 0.4 draft. And no, it, that... it was updated 0 0.2. So wouldn't it be 0 0.3 draft? The, so are you talking about the event or the spec version? This this sorry, the the spec um version. So when I rebase, it went from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, right? So that means I'm now on 0 0.3 dash draft. No, the, the latest release is 0 0.3. Is so it? we read we, we did release 0 0.3 last year. Uh, let me make sure because I swear. Um Okay, maybe. But yeah, I mean, we, we do have 0 0.3 out released okay, okay. last year. Yeah, yeah, so, maybe. So maybe, but maybe we missed to update some events. Like there could be, I don't know, maybe there is some things that were um, not up to date in the examples or somewhere. Um, but yeah, so the latest release that we made last year was 0.3. Uh, All right. I may have missing something, but yeah. Uh, all right. But either way, uh, that the links proposal is pretty much good to go. So could please re-review that, and then we should yeah. be pretty, pretty good. Right. Oh, that, that's cool. Um, I think uh, it, it seems to me that this might be the last iteration. I hope. I mean, yeah, it seems we're it's pretty, pretty close, close yeah. to. Um, and I I think once um the link proposal is is ready is merged. We might want to then start at 0 0.4 release, unless we feel that we wanted the ticket proposal to to be in there as well. But since it's been a long time since we've done the last release, um, I was thinking maybe we could have uh, the linking proposal in the next release, and then you know as soon as the ticket proposal is is ready, we could do another release the following month. If, yeah, yeah, that I think, makes sense. Yeah, I think that makes perfect, perfect sense. Okay, I see. I see what you're talking about. Zero point four. You're talking about a different version. I got confused. Yes, maybe. I mean, there's confusion between the event version and the spec version. Yeah, yeah, I so, see the spec version, yeah. <laughs> right.
All right. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks, Ben, for all your dates on this. And yeah, yeah no I'll, I'll re review. Uh, and yeah, hopefully we can merge it soon. Ben. That sounds good. Cool. And anything else? Um, I think you had another, you have another PR uh, ongoing, Ben. I'm not sure if. There oh, is the outcome one. That... Yeah, 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 yeah. So I haven't uh, updated that one just yet. Uh, I've been kind of swamped uh like with work work um so i'll I'll actually update that this week as well um after reviewing your pr i'll, I'll uh, update that and then i have that i have a draft github issue talking about the testing outcome one and so i'll also uh link that as well that'll, that'll be for next week so we we can delve deep more deeply into that cool thanks um all right so the last thing on the agenda i i put a link to the cd event translator mm -hmm. at, and then on jalander if there's um anything you want to yeah. discuss about this yeah uh i think i addressed most of the comments from ben uh thanks for reviewing andrea and emil i think uh so i need some clarifications maybe on the general comments that uh emil has raised uh to change the uh the project name and like, uh, yeah, so I will take other comments like to add more information uh, that he's suggesting. Uh, so in the design, um, so, but yeah, so I think most of them are clear. Uh, I think you have, uh, and you have got a couple of comments, maybe we can uh, go through those. Like if you have any sure. questions, maybe. Uh, so the uh, plan is to like, uh, to decide the outcome of like, which is the design approach that we wanted to take. Uh, of the city events translator with this design proposal yeah uh, but yeah so i will i'll push this uh, i mean like updated pr and we can conclude on uh, what approach to take basically um okay. yeah i think these things are fine <laughs> is there anything on here either yeah um yeah so i think uh, your comment here yeah I'll write about expand. that yeah, a yeah. little bit on this because it really depends on, like I said, really kind of depends on the design of the translator. But you can think of these plugins as like jars. Like if you're more familiar with Java, more like jars. Or for instance, um, C or C++, it'd be like an object file, DLL or .o, right? Um so what happens is when you run this application, let's say we make it very, very just flexible. We just, all your plugins would live in, let's say a folder. It would automatically fork all these processes and communicate and have like health checks and whatnot. So basically that's how that would work. So it's, it's yeah, multiple processes, but it's, it's no different than just forking an application and, and any other program, right? So um, so that's basically what that is. So it's a little bit heavier than a thread, but you know, like it's it's still it's it's yeah. these are gonna be very, very small binaries. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, so luckily, users, the the goal would be we would. I don't know, maybe this is going a little bit into design, but one approach is to have a Docker file and all people would need to do is maybe, um, you know, mount a, a directory or maybe have a config um, where it goes and pulls um, those binaries directly from, like for instance, like uh, like GitHub goes and builds those um, because these would all be in Go, for instance. Um, and, and it'd build those and then it would just... Uh, you know, run them appropriately. So that's another option. Um, and so it should be very uh, easy for end users to to go with this approach. Um, so I, I want to worry about maintainability for, for the um, for the HashiCorp solution. Well, yeah, no, I mean, as long as it, the, the processes are just maintained by the app, it's fine. The application, no... yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't sure whether, you know, as user, I had to, to run those as a separate service and Kubernetes and that's, you know, but if it's all within the same, uh, you know, kind of uh, process. Life cycle. Not the same process, but it's kind of yeah, the same yeah, application. Yeah. So it goes in the same. 
as long as it's maintained by the same application, it, it's yeah, fine, right? Exactly. So, okay, cool, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. So, uh, right. Um, I think we can resolve this. Yep. Yep. Cool. Yeah, and I agreed uh, yeah. with uh, both of your comments here too. So I think I think we addressed this, right, Jalander? We said that we can just remove this comment as well as this comment, uh, the Mozilla yes. license. So, um, yes. so I am we'll... talking with um, some Apple internal lawyers just to make sure that MPL is good. I imagine it's good. Um, the, you know, obviously the ones that uh, we have a hard no on is like GPL licenses, but um, yeah. I believe MPL should be fine. So this is, but again, I, I don't think it's appropriate to list it as a pro or a con because it's just, it's it's a license. I mean, if it's GPL, then maybe list that as a con because a lot of companies have issues with it. But um, MPL, from what I know, is is pretty pretty accept widely accepted um, for for enterprise. Yeah. Okay. I mean, from from a pure CDF point of view, it, it is fine. But of course, we we can decide as a project if it's fine for us or not. So yeah, please uh, do let yep, us yep. let us know, Pam. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, right. I think that's all right. Uh, yeah, I think uh, some comments from Emil. I think he's not here, but yeah, so most of them like uh, general comments. Uh, I think that we can see on the conversations. Oh, yeah, it's on the main, uh, it's not on the code, it's like, yeah, a, all right, outside. Uh, <laughs> yeah, very bottom. Yeah, so some things are uh, fine. Like, uh, so only thing, so it, it's like things that I will add. Uh, so more information kind of what we are doing with this translator, uh, kind of like translating in one way and uh, having this implemented for only CM tools for now. Uh, stating that information is missing is what uh, Emil has pointed out. So I'll add those. And I think the naming uh, for the CD events translator, uh, so I think, uh, we were thinking like if it is webhook cd events uh, maybe the webhook cd events producer uh, I, I don't know if i like producer though. i think we i think we should yeah. still call it translator and the reason why is producer is a very cd events related term and people that might be coming in that are new wanting to get started they're not going to know they might not know what that is so i think a translator still might be more appropriate but let's let's ping a meal let's um respond to a meal and just ask if webhook cd events translator um mm -hmm. if he's okay with that because like i said producers a little you know that's not really a, a cs and a software engineering term like in, in um i mean well it, it is kind of in, in some regards but like you know when you think of services you don't you, you don't typically see producer as as the end name of a, of a service or a library but like translator it's very familiar so um i think going with some a term that's a little bit more familiar might be useful um unless uh i'm wrong and you know if we can find some examples where producer is actually used then i'd be more willing to um to agree just using cd webhook cd events producer but it seems a little um niche which is a little bit concerning so let's let's ask emil if he's okay with a uh, webhook cd events translator what's the um what's the context of the producer i mean so, if it's is it con is it kafka related because i mean if you're producing messages on a kafka bus you're a producer that's like common vernacular no, no, um, this would be a webhook um so this would just be like a webhook uh and it would come in uh, it would take any sort of arbitrary payload and convert that to um, to a CD event mm -hmm. and send that off. So it's like translating and sending events. So it's like pro right. proxy, um, more or less, a translating proxy. <laughs> mm, I, I almost like adapter better. Yeah, I, I think adapter is is the correct name because that's the actual design pattern um but i'm okay with translator as well but um but yeah i've never heard translator in the scope of kafka but i've definitely heard adapter we've used connectors 
um, you know, there, there are several words in the Kafka world that we've used, uh, but translator is not one of them. Um, so I would be, I would be better with adapter because that's more of a, you'll hear that in the Kafka world more. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Like I said, I think a little bit of research, however, I don't think we should just be looking only at one like Kafka, for instance, because, um, this actually has nothing to do with Kafka or okay. really, um, I mean, it's sending things off, but it could be anywhere. It could be Kafka. It could be like another event bus. It might not even be an event bus period. It could just be another service. So, um, so I, but I am, I, I do like adapter though. So I, I think that is a key takeaway. So, um, uh, I would be okay with webhook CD events adapter or webhook CD events translator um, or even, yeah, like, I, I don't know. Let's, let's give some suggestions. Names are, names are difficult, right? So uh, let's, um, let's respond to Emil and ask if he's okay with like a, a CD, webhook CD events uh, translator adapter, and then maybe some others um, that we can we can figure uh, think of as well. Just give him a list, and he can kind of figure out which which ones he's okay with. Okay, naming is hard. Yeah, yeah, agreed. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, I will I will reply here with some suggestions, maybe based on the discussion now. Uh, apart from these, like once I'll push the changes with these like uh, little changes uh, so the main conclusion that we wanted to make uh, out of this design is like uh, uh, deciding the approach that to implement uh, i'm not sure like this is the right time now so maybe i'll push all the changes uh, if any comments on the uh, picking the right uh, approach now so we can we can conclude anything or, or just i will push anyway like the changes or comments uh, this way um, yeah, just wanted to. I mean, from from my side, as, assuming that the license is not an issue, it sounds like the the Azure Core plugin mechanism sounds like a, a good option. Uh, yeah, that's what I was leaning towards too. But, but um, yeah, yeah. I guess that depends on on confirming the licensing as well. Yeah, yeah, I'll have an answer. Uh, I'll try to have an answer by Wednesday, Jolander, and, and let you okay. know, but don't let this be a blocker. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like I said, make the necessary changes as as you see fit. Um, and, you know, we can we can figure out the details. Um, and, and the reason why I say don't let this be a blocker because I'm 99.9, .9, I'm like, almost a hundred percent certain it's not going to be an issue. So, uh, you know, don't let, don't, you don't need to wait on this is what I was getting at. Yeah. It, sounds good. Yeah. The licensing question is MPL two, right? Yeah. I believe it's MPL two. Yes. Okay. That's a, there's a big difference between difference, MPL yes. and MPL two. <laughs> and so in, in, and I talk to my lawyers a lot and MPL two is generally accepted as okay. MPL yeah, one's a little bit more strict. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's so, a good call um, out. So just make sure that when you're talking to whoever about permission, you know, hey, is this license okay? Be really specific because yeah, yeah. the the MPL two, they're gonna be like, yeah, it's fine, you know. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, I'll definitely uh, add that to to the context. I think because I just said MPL, but you're absolutely right that V one is um, way more strict. So I'll I'll definitely have to reach back out so thank thank you for mentioning that because that totally slipped my mind and have you played with hash course plugin at all jolander have you gave that a whirl yet Oh yeah, so I have uh, the sample when working my local, like with sample things that I set up. Uh, I wrote the code, and so oh, there cool, are some cool. generate codes and things like that. So I have uh, things ready. Yeah. So. Oh, cool. How how do you like it? Just out of curiosity. Oh yeah. So if we have the main application that is working, uh, I think like to pick the right translator so that that works very quick. I mean, like it's easy to maintain different plugins or like different translator that you implement in one place. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so yeah, that looks good. Wow.
All right, it's good good to hear. I've only heard good things about it, but I've never used it myself. So that's why I was kind of curious to get your take on it. But it sounds like you also have good things to say about it. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I can show the working piece maybe the next time. So I have some sample things running. So I can just show next Awesome, week. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay. exciting. Um so we had someone else joining for a short time, but then didn't manage to, to catch them. But um, all right. Um, and anything else on, on this, Jalander? Thank, thanks for driving this forward. Oh. Uh, that's all for now. So uh, I will push the changes, I think, once approved. So the plan is like I will start the uh, uh, translator for Gerrit initially. Uh, so that's that's a plan once this is approved we'll push the changes and wait for the approval uh, you guys here thanks nice um one thing that just came to mind um on the argo city side um you have some uh, folks at um amazon uh, started doing some psc for for the uh, sending CD events from from Argo CD side, so that oh that's that, exciting. Uh, yeah, that that started. Um, so in, it's this is in the context of the um, Cano uh, group, and they're mm -hmm. very interested in CD events. Um, and because they they rely on in, in their kind of reference implementation, and Cano it's kind of a IDP, so internal development platform. Um. So they rely on on Argo CD in their uh, reference implementation. So it's in, very interesting for them. So we we have some initial discussion and this POC being built. And I, I started in HackMD uh, actually. And we should. Uh, oh, play. did you have a meeting set up with them? That I would love to talk to them um, specifically about AWS and Amazon, like kind of like long term what they're thinking. Um, I know they can't say much because of legality, but just kind of get some sort of inclination on what their their plans are, or if, or if it's just for Argo CD itself, um, or if they plan on doing this, doing more outside of Argo CD, like that would be great to know. Right. Um, yeah, I know that right now there is interest in, definitely in the, in the area of uh, the IDP. So that means... Um, you know, having different components, yeah, yeah. producing them, and then being able then to uh, use this kind of common language to bring information into into backstage to kind of surface it to to users of the IDP. So one thing that uh, they would be interested in in contributing is also I think um, a backstage plugin for for CD events. Cool, cool. cool. Um, but um, yeah, so that that's as far as I know. Um, we created a CD events um, channel in uh, in the CNCF Slack on the CNCF Slack uh, to discuss in general like integration between CD events and CNCF projects there. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the people um, that we are discussing we have discussion with um, from the Cano group are, are in that meeting, and I invited also the uh, the folks. They're contributing to the flag side to join. And then I created an HackMD. Um, so this is the initial information I got from Andrew from Amazon and kind of the, the, the mapping that is doing between CD events and Argo things. And I think it would be great to get this kind of information from the Argo side and from the flag side together in a document so we can try to align and see also if there are things that are missing from a GitOps point of view in CD and who, events. Who's, who's the contact from Amazon? Andrew who? I don't know, it's not very bad with names. Andrew Lee, I think. Okay, okay. Let me make sure. Yes, Lee, Andrew Lee. Uh, is one of the contexts. Also, I mean, uh, talking with Nima, Nima Kadiani from Amazon. Okay, okay. 
So he, he Nima is, was my my first contact because we used to work together at IBM on the same team. Um, but, and yeah. who was that? You said Nina N I N A Nima. Okay, okay. Nima. And then what's her last name? Caviani uh, K A V I A N I. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you, yeah. sir. I just want to see what teams they're they're a part of. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so, uh, and yeah. So, are there any uh, meetings happening like to discuss about these uh, mappings for Argo CD and Flux? Because we are uh, right now creating a proposal for Flux CD uh, uh, to to produce CD events and discussing a mapping for uh, specific event types. I think we're in touch with Flux CD, but we wanted to map, I think, the same uh, with Argo CD as well. So if, if there is any mismatch, or it'll be a, I think, common set of events that uh, what Argo CD and Flux CD uses, it's all Kubernetes, Kubernetes events, basically, right? So but another question I have, like, only they're discussing about Argo CD. Uh, what about, like, Argo Flux, Ar uh, I mean, like, Argo workflows and Argo rollouts? Uh, is there any plan like to integrate CD events? Uh, so those deployment types, I mean, like uh, I, I see only Argo CD as a component, but there is a requirement uh, like with an Ericsson I heard like uh, for Argo workflows also. Um, yeah, so I think when, when uh, I had a chat with, um, uh, with Michael, um, from into it um and at kubecon i mean you mentioned the various projects under the argo umbrella so i don't think there is any reason why argo workflows uh, should not be part of that or argo rollout um i think right now uh, argo cd um as a key component from the canoe point of view and so we have one person working on that implementation um but yeah so hopefully we'll get implementation for the other components i think as usual in open source um yeah implementation will happen when someone is interested in driving it basically but yeah so we can it, i mean if this is important for for ericsson i think it shouldn't be um yeah it should it, it would be good to you know join the conversation and drive that that side of uh, Argo as well. Um, in terms of meetings, uh, we don't have any particular meeting scheduled right now. So we had an initial meeting with the Canoe folks. To so we we met at KubeCon, then we had a follow up meeting um, with uh, Argo people to you know to kick off, uh, make sure things went moved forward, and then and Andrew uh, Lee to kind of the 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 lead in like setting up an initial POC. Uh, the, the, the initial implementation is it's basically, I think something similar to what it might be on Flux side. So they have a notification engine. And so it's basically configuration of the notification engine, you know, pulling the right bits of information to to produce a CD event. So kind of some kind of templating mechanism. Um, follow-up implementation would be more uh, like in in the code uh, to you know to to be, make it a bit uh, make it possible to use the SDK and you know pull in some information that is not available otherwise in the notification right right and the code base for Argo and flux is that go well, I'm just curious like what language are those two tools written in yeah it's go it's okay, okay. Go. It's I mean, it's go for our, yeah okay yeah, Flux as well. Um, so yeah, so I mean, we don't have any mailing planned, uh, yeah. but we do have the CD events um, a channel on the CNCF Slack. If you're there, yeah. Um, yeah. And also, we have this. I I asked. I haven't got a reply yet, but I I asked Andrew whether it would be okay to start collaborating on this uh, hack and D. Uh, Cool. Because yeah, it sounds uh, exciting. Yeah, I think it would be great if we can align the um, the Flux and Argo implementation 
And that's that's one of the goals to begin with. I mean, of the whole canoe effort is to to be able to you know like replace swap components. So you, maybe they have the reference implementation with Argo, but they they may have some users they want to use Flux, and so they want to right, make sure right. that using CD events they can swap to another component, and therefore they're also interested in you know making sure that like implementation is aligned across components as much as possible. Cool. And right. yeah, 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 yeah. That's... Right. It sounds it sounds so exciting. It, uh, Argo CD like they're only uh, interested in sending CD events, so there is no use case as such uh, to receive CD event and do something. Uh, I mean, like as a receiver part. And... Um, there, there is one use case that we discussed some time ago, um, and I think it's still valid, um, and that's. Um, there is one component that watches uh, container images on the registry, and right now they 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 I think call for version updates, and um, and so that that workflow could be implemented as the container registry sending a, a CD event saying okay I've got a new version of this artifact and then Argo reacting to that and say okay I'm going to go ahead and you know propose a PR and so forth and so forth. Uh, so to switch that from a poll to like reacting to an event. So I know that that's one use case we discussed. Okay, okay. I think uh, to update the resources in the cluster as well, I think it it does a uh, a poll from the Git or Git repositories right now. I think it's it's every three seconds or so. Okay. And even that that can be a it's it's a polling. Yeah. Uh, what Argo CD does to. Uh, Repositories, yeah. Uh, okay, let's go. Yeah, I I don't know if it's possible to completely get rid of the poll, um, but at least if you implement it, if you combine it with the events, you can you might be able to gain some some speed and reduce the frequency of the polls. Um, so yeah. if you get the event, you can react right away. The only thing is that in some cases you receive an event and something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure that you're still reacting to to the change. And in that sense, the the periodic check, I think it's more uh, robust. But I think it, the, the, the two can be combined. No. Cool. OK. Um, anything else? Anyone on, do you want to discuss mm. today? Nothing on my end. Oh, well, um, thanks everyone. I think we're doing very good progress. So, yeah, I um, mean, no, I mean, the fact that, you know, we have Amazon even looking at it makes it much more exciting for me, for me at least, you know, because I'm like, oh, I used to work there. So it's great to, you know, see that they're also interested in, and you know stuff that that we're doing as well so it's, it's it's pretty awesome so really exciting um but yeah yeah so uh did uh anyone else have anything because i i i'm i do not and i'm i need to I think, talk to these lawyers yeah uh so i think one update uh so the spinnaker cd events integration so it's all the documentation changes and everything is uh merged all the peers are merged uh even the official documentation of spinnaker includes the uh, user guide for cd events integration uh, for spinnaker so that's, that's nice just, nice um, yeah so there's one thing that we do need to do because i don't think it does any sort of um cd like the cd of cd events like i know it does the pipeline events and the and the task events but we should probably take some time to send like service deployed and like the environment created events at some point as well um so i think we were potentially looking at creating that pr um if you weren't already thinking about it jolander uh, so yeah, right now it is all core events initially uh, yes. that are created. So if any uh, requirements, I mean, like that's what we are uh, thinking. Like if any uh, users use it, like we'll have more uh, comments, uh, at least like if they use, so we can implement more uh, uh, events to support. 
I mean, oh, okay. Cool. No, no. I was just wondering if you were looking at, uh, if you were looking at doing, because like we started looking into creating these events ourselves, um, and potentially pushing them upstream. So if you were already doing that, I'm like, oh, uh, we should work not together. started yet, but okay, yeah, so okay, we can yeah. we can do it together. If we have okay, to. so sounds good. I'll just post the documentation links for producing and receiver. Yeah. Oops, uh, sorry, I was muted. Yeah, thanks for, for the links, uh, Jalander. And yeah, thanks everyone. And see you next time. And yep, see you next week. Day. All right, bye yeah, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.